after you successfully configured your uh, server Google Tag Manager container, uh, sending data to SGTM container, and maybe you already have some tags uh, firing in SGTM container, uh, it's time to talk about how you can verify that uh, your server-side tagging works correctly. Uh, if you notice some issues with the performance of the SGTM and server-side tagging, the first thing that I suggest uh, to check if is if your tagging server URL works correctly. Uh, so the process of uh, checking uh, what is wrong is pretty simple. You just need to uh, type your tagging server URL slash healthy. And if you see the response OK, uh, then it means that uh, tagging server URL works, works fine. Um, in case uh, uh, response is not 400 or OK, uh, it means that uh, your uh, like uh, 400 response you might receive if you pass just your taken server URL without slash healthy. Mm -hmm. So um, for taken server URL um, response 400 is a good sign that it means that everything works correctly. For the um, uh, taken server URL slash healthy, you should see the uh, response okay. Uh, if uh, something goes wrong, you should first uh, check if your DNS records are correct. So inside Stape, uh, uh, if there are some issues, maybe some records were removed by the developer team and you do not know about that, you will see an error uh, here, what type of record was removed and uh, how you can fix that. Um, so once you verify that taking server works correctly, you can move to um, SGTM debugger and see that, and uh, for example, if you have issue with a specific tag, uh, you can see uh, why this tag did not trigger. I've already prepared a few cases where tag did not trigger, so um, you can see I have a few events in my SGTM container, so for example, um, uh, for this page view event from Google Analytics 4, I see the incoming request to SGTM sent by GA4 from a web container. And uh, um, on this, for this incoming request, I have uh, three outgoing requests. And I can see that uh, four tags were fired um, for this incoming request. Um, as you can see here, the status of all tags are succeeded. It means that everything worked okay and we do not need to worry about that. Um, let's uh, see the purchase event. Uh, for the purchase event, I have a Facebook purchase tag uh, failed. Uh, to understand what is the issue, uh, you can click console and inside the console you can see um, log uh, data and uh, it will help you to understand what was wrong and uh, like for this particular tag. So uh, this is the log that uh, corresponds to my Facebook purchase event and usually at the very bottom uh, you can see the uh, the reason why tag was not fired. So in my case is that uh, the uh, currency parameter was not uh, configured correctly. So um, you can then go to uh, tags, open this tag and yeah, check values and for example here I'm sending currency as 1, 2, 3 and uh, if I go to console, uh, error says that you should send a valid uh, currency code in this format. Um, so this is pretty simple when debugging, uh, you normally these uh, errors are like pretty clear and uh, you can fix it uh, right away. Um, the third option on how you can debug SGTM setup is uh, uh, state logs. Um, there is a separate tab inside your uh, state container and uh, here on the logs tab we have uh, four different type of logs. So basically it access logs, uh, they show the request received by your uh, SGTM container. Uh, request log displayed request sent uh, by the server to Facebook, TikTok and uh, other platforms. Uh, response log is basically responses that were received from uh, vendors to which you send uh, uh, data from SGTM and other logs. Uh, 
Other logs are like specific type of logs for uh, state logger tag. I will talk about state logger tag a little bit later in this video. Um, for access logs, uh, you can see all the basically everything. Uh, all the all the logs that your SGTM container received. So uh, you can filter it by day, or for example, you can add the stat status code. Um, you can filter by client, event time, etc. Um, on this tab, you can open log and uh, see all the detailed information about that. Um, regarding request and uh, uh, response log. Uh, this type of logs uh, work only if you use uh, state tags for SGTM container. For example, let me show you how it should look for the Facebook tag by state. Mm, I have here two tags. And um, if you scroll down to the tag settings, there is an option to expand uh, log settings and you can um, select um, like what type of uh, logs you prefer to see in the inside state logs. So you can either select do not uh, receive any logs or just log everything while debugging or always log to consult. Uh, how we usually do that? Um, I select like always log to console when uh, I'm setting up uh, the like Facebook tag or any other tag. In this case, I can uh, eliminate uh, uh, and debug issues uh, that happen not only when I do the debug of SGTM container, but also when uh, like on the production side. So for example, let's say I selected always log to console. It means that uh, on the production, this tag will log everything to state logs. And uh, let's say later, I want to see that uh, like all responses uh, from Facebook that have uh, 500 uh, response code or something. So, um, like after a few days, I will have uh, enough data to 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 do this filter, and you can see that in my case, uh, there were no uh, 500 responses. But if I go to 200, so you can see that there were a few of them. Um, yeah. So. Uh, just remember that uh, uh, this uh, request and response logs uh, all only work for state tag and uh, state is the biggest contributor to SGTM template gallery so we have a bunch of tags like for most popular platforms um, yeah and uh, you cannot utilize state logs for this um, let me show you also how uh, logs can be helpful uh, let's say we want to see all the response logs by Facebook. Um, so uh, here uh, I see like uh, 200 uh, statuses, which means that uh, response was okay. So Facebook uh, received data, it processes it, so there is no need to worry about something. Uh, but there is a one log with 400 status. Uh, here, what you can do is you can open this log and uh, you can see like all the like uh, uh, log chain uh, for this request. You can see access log, request request log and response log. So basically you can see the, the whole path that uh, this request went through before like Facebook uh, uh, replied with the 400 code. Um, so you can see the details for the uh, incoming uh, request to buy that was parsed by GA4. Uh, then you have a request log and then you have a response log. So uh, response log uh, have uh, pretty similar information that you normally see inside the SGTM debugger. And it's uh, uh, again, like if you select to log everything to console while uh, like on the production, you can see uh, all the errors that might happen to your website on the production. So if I scroll down, uh, I can also see here response body and I can see here the um, error code and basically the reason why Facebook uh, said uh, 400 status for this request and not 200. Um, yeah, so these are access logs, request logs and response logs. Uh, let's move to other logs. Um, other logs is uh, like specific uh, type of logs that were created for the state logger tag. Um, 
uh, why we created a logger tag because it's uh, uh, impossible to, de to debug post requests inside the SGTM container. So uh, no matter if you use STAPE or GCP, uh, inside STAPE or GCP logs you won't be able to uh, to test uh, post requests and normally like um, we see like up to 50% uh, of uh, requests by Google Analytics 4, they send it into e using the post format. Um, if you have some issues with uh, this type of request or you just want to debug them, uh, you need to use a state logger tag. Um, let me show you how to set it up. Um, this uh, logger tag, uh, you can find it inside the template gallery. So uh, after you add it to the um, to your SGTM container, you just need to configure it. Uh, it's pretty simple, uh, like as uh, all the uh, all other like uh, tags. So you again, you should select here either you want to always log or just only when debugging. Um, then you can add. Yeah, an event name, so you can you can either like choose here uh, like a variable event, or just add uh, I don't know event name logger, and it will help you just to differentiate uh, these logs inside the state or other logs section. Um, then we suggest uh, to enable um, this uh, checkbox. Uh, log request body is basically uh, what we are looking for when we see like post request by GA4. So our key goal is to uh, log request body, um, then parse request body, and uh, like normally I uh, enable like uh, this uh, two above uh, uh, log uh, all event data and log request URL uh, as well because it helps like to. Uh, to get more information about uh, the request inside other logs. Um, and what you need to do as well is just uh, add a uh, uh, trigger. Let me uh, test if logger tag worked correctly. Yeah, you can see that logger tag uh, fired on the user engagement and the page view event. Let me also click some other pages and uh, then we will go to state logs. Yeah, so. Uh, here uh, you can see basically all the data that uh, a logger tag were, was able to to log uh, using the like uh, the, the setup that we recently configured. And uh, the last feature that we normally utilize for monitoring and debugging uh, the setup is uh, monitoring. It's a again feature inside Stape, and uh, it. Uh, like uh, helpful uh, after you uh, implemented the initial setup, you tested everything inside the SGTM and maybe you uh, tested uh, using logs and now you want uh, to uh, ensure that uh, um, like uh, this tag will uh, work correctly on the production. Uh, to do so, you can create uh, alerts inside Stape. So, um, what type of alerts are useful? For example, you want to receive an alert if uh, uh, there were like more than zero uh, 500 re uh, responses by uh, Facebook during like one hour or one day. So uh, our monitoring uh, alerts, uh, they work based on the state logs. So uh, basically any information that you can see inside the state logs, you can create rule for them uh, using monitoring feature. And uh, yeah, so you just uh, type. Okay, let's do. Um, yeah, let's do. Uh, let's, for example, create a rule where uh, Facebook have uh, a resp five hundred response. So uh, we uh, need to check uh, response log, and we want to receive a, an alert. Uh, if uh, there was a 500 response during, like, let's say, one day, 
and uh, we need to set, set the conditions uh, much uh, so client matches exact exactly um, Um, so yeah, uh, so here we need to add uh, one, sec one second platform matches exactly uh, Facebook alert me when um, and status code uh, matches exactly 500 and alert me when is um, this one is greater uh, this like uh, the number of uh, 500 responses that we receive uh, from Facebook during one day is more than zero and just click save alert um, Once you created an alert you can uh, Like set settings for this alert uh, Right now we have an option to notify you only by email, but you can include multiple emails for example Here I have uh, uh, like my account email. Uh, so basically uh, when this alert triggers I will receive a notification to my um, uh, like video at stay.io email about uh, this trigger but you can add some more emails if you'd like um, yeah so uh, this is everything that I wanted to talk uh, uh, about in this section so basically we discussed how to check your if tagging server URL works correctly how to uh, test everything inside the SGTM debugger use stay blogs uh, use uh, logger tag and as well as uh, configure uh, alerts using state monitoring feature. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.